Now, what's happening locally? In the Kenyan front, on the Kenyan front, the High Court in Nairobi has ordered the electoral agency to look at gospel artist Ruben Kigame's application to determine whether he should be in the presidential race. Justice Anthony Mrima yesterday found that the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission had treated Kigame unfairly based on his disability. According to the judge, the artist's efforts to gather signatures and present his academic papers were more than enough effort to have him considered for clearance. The court was of the view that he could not be treated as other candidates who have no impairment. The judge said there is need for Parliament to enact a law that enables persons with disabilities to fully participate in politics. He, however, rejected Kigame's prayer to compel the IABC to have him on the ballot, saying uh, this would amount to overstretching the court's mandate. The judge said it's only IABC that can decide whether he will be on the ballot or not. The manner in which it dealt with the petitioner's disability was unfair, unreasonable, and irrational. The petitioner has proved that the decision was not in accordance with the law. The Dispute Resolution Committee of the IABC's decision because the signatures were filed out of time, uh, that is not satisfactory. Now, we have Ruben Kigame in the studio with us to talk further about this. Ruben, good morning. Good morning, guys. How are you? Very well. well thank uh -huh. you. You've been up and early. How many hours now? Uh, you guys, veterans. Counting. Veterans. Uh, <laughs> good to be here again. Karibu sana. Asante. Uh, where are you from? Are you from Nairobi? Are you from Eldred? Are you from campaigning around the country? I'm from Kenya. Uh -huh. This is not Kenya. We talk about this. We talk about this. We trying to figure out what this country is about mm. and trying to figure out where I'm going myself. Mm. <laughs> but the High Court gave me some kind of direction yesterday. Yeah. So the case was ruled uh, in my favor as uh, much as I can judge. Mm. Um, it did not quite capture uh, what my submissions were all about. Mm. But nevertheless, I'm happy uh, with, uh, with, with, with the conclusions because all is well that ends well. Ruben. They what, focused too much on what the... What was your prayer? When you went to court, uh -huh. what, how many prayers did you have? And Two main ones. They? Okay. That um, I had been treated unfairly with regard to process. Okay. And two, that I was treated unfairly in view of the constitutional provisions for me as someone living with disability. Mm -hmm. So those two main uh, issues. On the first one, uh, I wish they laid a lot more emphasis because what ended up uh, hitting uh, the masses was that uh, I was actually out of time with uh, the signatures, which is not true. Um, the manner in which my documents were handled is what was my problem. And indeed, the manner of uh, Wafula Chebukati and the commission um, handling my application. Um, you know, there are two ways discrimination could be read in this uh, particular case. Mm. One is that, uh, um, you know, you do something to you know for some people and you don't do that for me so and that is in view of the extensions of the submission times and so on uh, most of my colleagues were given two or three extensions mm. i was given only one and that one you know ended up with me being at bomas on the 29th and nobody wanted to look at my documents mm. So that's the main um, challenge with uh, the process that after that, in trying to deal with the matter, they were all avoiding me mm. and or tossing me back and forth, barring me from access and all of those. And then uh, finally, I meet with Chebukati on the 5th of uh, June. And it's probably one of the worst experiences uh, that... Uh, I ever had because that same morning he had just met Raila 
and uh, you know, given a royal welcome. And uh, he gives me an appointment for four o'clock. And uh, at three, we are at the gate. We waited until 4.30, being barred and asked who we are mm. with an appointment. Mm -hmm. And it took my uh, friend, Gitobu in Manyara, who was with me all that time, to actually go and look for Chebukati where he was in a meeting mm. with some other people and literally forced him out of the meeting. And he comes out kicking and screaming, saying he'll give me only 10 minutes. Mm. And uh, in the 10 or so minutes, he tells me his hands are tied. The commission uh, does not have any legal jurisdiction to accommodate me. Mm. Uh, and that he cannot receive my signatures because I was out of time. Therefore, I'm disqualified. Mm. Now, that, so the whole thing did not hold together for me. That's why I mainly went to court. But looking at um, what the court dwelt on, um, we, we, we end up with a constitutional crisis mm. because of two things. One, the Dispute Resolution commis Committee uh, decides that the reason why I'm raising this case is because I want extra special treatment, mm. which was not the case. Mm -hmm. I just wanted fair process. But in dismissing uh, that process and arguing that I want special treatment as a blind person, they actually triggered my decision to emphasize the details of the constitutional provisions for persons living with disability. What are those details, Ruben? So, number one... What does the law say about a person living with disability and their participation in elections. It begins with a general provision in Article 27, mm. uh, which basically says, uh, this, this is the article against uh, discrimination of any kind, mm. for anybody. And uh, Clause 4 actually does include persons with disability. Nobody will be discriminated on the basis of, uh, you know, race, color, sex, gender, you know, disability. Yeah. Um, and then that same article um, says that uh, the state will ensure that uh, um, you know, all citizens are treated the same. So uh, that's the fundamental one. But Article 54 mm. specifically states that uh, persons living with disability um, need to be treated with dignity and to be uh, addressed in a manner that is not demeaning. And uh, it also adds that um, uh, the government and uh, its, uh, you know, through its constitution, uh, institutions rather, will ensure that uh, persons living with disability have access to all uh, kinds of things. Uh, you know, the communication stuff, including sign language, braille, name it. But also uh, inclusion in, uh, you know, uh, uh, public uh, uh, places like political uh, appointments and so on. Uh, the, the point is to realize uh, a 5% inclusion mm. uh, in, um, in, the, in, 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 uh, in, in the public uh, life of, of, of the country. Mm. So, so you look at those provisions, uh, you look at Article 83 uh, that uh, provides that uh, the commission should be able to uh, ensure that um, it enhances my participation. Mm -hmm. And uh, you could look at Article 28 on uh, the dignity of the individual. And so all these provisions, um, the court says, uh, you know, the DRC in particular uh, just overlooked, did not even look at them, but then adds that uh, these particular provisions are not just uh, constitu constitutional provisions. They are grounded in international laws and conventions. Mm. The United Nations uh, Convention, 1948, 1965, I think it was 1975. A lot of uh, provisions that uh, uh, implore governments as well as, uh, uh, you know, uh, groups to ensure that they provide for uh, conditions and circumstances that would enhance participation and inclusion. 
Now, uh, if you look at Article 2, uh, Clause 5 and 6 of our Constitution, it says that um, such conventions, such uh, uh, you know, international provisions, uh, will make a part of our laws as a country. Mm -hmm. So for them not to look at, you know, uh, my case within the constitutional provisions was a major, major um, uh, down, down, downside for them. And so um, the conclusion of the court was basically that in principle, uh, what IEBC was doing was setting up a higher bar mm. for me, you know, expecting more from me than from my, you know, competitors. When they should have lowered it? Um, I don't like the lowering, hmm. you know, because... Well, I mean, it's the opposite of raising yeah. the bar, it's lowering the bar. So, I mean, in this case, if you're saying that they have raised the bar for you, uh -huh. should, what should have been the alternative? What should they so, have So, done? you see, the bar is this, hmm. that we are expected to bring our signatures from 24 counties... Do you have them? Do you not have them? Mm. Mm -hmm. Two, um, if you don't have them, uh, this is the time in which you need to, you know, uh, correct your, you know, format and, you know, bring them back. Mm. And they did that for almost all of us. Yeah. Now, when I take back my signatures on the day I'm given to take them back, they don't receive them. Now, so they expect me to comply without looking at my documents. Mm -hmm. Those documents I still hold to this day. Mm. And so the question was, why would they expect uh, me to comply without looking at my documents mm -hmm. when everybody else is complying uh, by virtue of their documents being looked? And secondly, they, well, it's not just about signatures. Mm -hmm. You look at uh, one's degrees, you look at... Uh, uh, the EACC report, you look at uh, KRA compliance, you look at all those things. Mm -hmm. I never got an appointment for any of that. So, uh, basically, I'm supposed to qualify on a totally different standard than everybody else. But then the court takes this further and says, um, given the fact that IEBC did not publish anything in Braille or in a manner to help me find this process easier, mm. but still expecting me to go around the country as a blind person collecting signatures mm -hmm. from all these, uh, uh, you know... And verifying them to and be verifying true. And verifying them to be true, mm. that they were actually expecting too much of me mm. and that whatever I, ha I was able to collect should have, should have been, been sufficient. Okay. But let me ask you, actually, Ru mm -hmm. Ruben, sure. now that we say this, so the expectation is that a candidate will demonstrate that they have support from registered voters mm -hmm. now somebody living with this with a disability how would you know that the person whom you've approached and has signed that form has actually signed the form great so so that is the place of education mm. because this is what happens um when i was a teacher uh the tsc gave me the provision for having someone you call a personal assistant. Mm -hmm. Most of persons living with disability, especially those uh, with a visual handicap, mm -hmm. are entitled to a personal assistant. Mm -hmm. Now, since I left the TSC and, uh, you know, government-related work, mm -hmm. um, I still make use of a personal assistant every, every so often. Mm -hmm. So the personal assistant would be someone cited who, if you give me your ID um, or document, I uh, have you, you know, sign a document, he will verify for me yeah. that you're doing what, say, the IBC wanted. This is, I tell him, this is what is expected. This is what I want. Can you ensure? So um, it goes through his eyes mm -hmm. for the verification process. Now, nobody, none of the presidential candidates, I must put it to you, went out one by one, you know, by themselves to collect these signatures. They were helped. They used the party machinery. Party machineries, you know, their friendships and so on. Mm -hmm. I have 
friendships too. Mm -hmm. And never mind, I need to let you know that I came from a party background. Yeah. And so I have all these connections. And then the, the blessing of independent candidates all over the place. So the, the two main places I actually personally got involved in collecting signatures uh, were, not two, three, uh, was uh, uh, Wasingishu, where I live, mm -hmm. Vihiga, and Nairobi, mm. where I personally, you know, supervised the process. But I did travel and uh, checked on the different uh, independent candidates, you know, the MCAs and MPs that are aligned to me that were helping me with collecting in other parts of the country. Mm. So we then co got to the tallying process. You have a team that helps you to verify, you know, that these are really in the system and so on. So it's a process. But what I'm trying to say is that uh, at the immediate level, I do use a personal assistant. Mm. But at the uh, um, implementation level, every one of us, including those that are not visually challenged, mm. will have extra support from uh, teams in the party or within your, your formulations. Mm. So, so at the end of the day, then it's teamwork, really. And so as the supervisor of the team... I then verify my work is complete. It's time to take to, uh, the, commission. to, to the commission. Mm. So I wasn't asking for any special treatment so at you, that level. And you were not asking to be provided with a personal assistant? No, 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 no. Not at all. Th that's not an expectation? No. I did. In fact, I had no single expectation for IEBC mm. except clear me. Okay. Yeah. Let's take and a break. You, let, okay. Let me just make this real quick. Mm. Um, you, you may know that within their own provisions for women, youth, and persons with disability, they create an exception, uh, whereby when it comes to the nomination fee, for example, uh, they're supposed to pay 200,000, we're supposed to pay 100,000. Mm. So you can already see that there is um, accommodation envisaged. They just did not take that accommodation all the way. To the full extent. Yes. <laughs> it is 28 minutes to 10. This is Kenya's biggest conversation. Ruben Kigame presidential aspirant is in the studio with us he won in the high court yesterday when justice anthony Mirima said the iebc should listen to him should accept his application to be considered to be on the ballot on august 9th that's a conversation we're having elections bilanoma we are going into an election we must make sure that there is peace one of the areas that the uh, ncic had highlighted as a potential area for violence is Wasingishu Eldred. Ruben, you've been on the ground. How is it this time if you compare to the previous elections, campaign seasons? Totally unrealistic. Mm. Wasingishu, since uh, 2008, mm. has uh, graduated to one of the most peaceful uh, places uh, in the country. In fact, I would be more worried to be in Baringo Mm. Uh, or uh, Lamu or uh, Garissa uh, than, uh, or in fact, m parts of Marraquet, I would be more worried than to be in Wasingishu. I've lived there. Mm. Uh, I think I've seen the, the worst and the best of it. That's why I can authoritatively say this uh, time, this time, it's peaceful. That's very good. We are going to this election, Bila Noma, Penda Jirani. Let's take a break. This is the Situation Room. The only way to start your day. Then the IBC invites you to present your papers, and the IBC considers, and then the IBC has got to gazette you. <laughs> do we have sufficient? I mean, do you want to take us through all this? So there are two things I need to bring to your attention, Eric. Mm. One is um, why I'm running. Okay. And secondly, you know, the, the massive nature, the, the bigness of this case. So why am I running? I'm running because I believe in something. Mm. I believe that we need to restore dignity to the people of Kenya. That I believe with all my heart because we are, we are very indignified. Mm -hmm. I'm running because we have lost values as a nation. We talk about the economy. We talk about, you know, corruption. We talk about our bad manners. It's all because... There is something we've lost that we need to go back to. And I'm passionate about going back to the foundations of 
who we are as a people because some of that needs to be corrected by very little things uh, that, you know, if we pushed by um, way of a government of example, I think we can achieve a lot. In fact, some of our economic problems can be solved by the restoration of values. And then I want development to be people-centered. So I'm very passionate about that. And for me, it doesn't matter how long it takes for us to achieve that. I'm sold out. I'm passionate. Even when I have been um, uh, away from the campaign trail um, and just majoring on media, uh, that's my message. We need to reboot the country and get it back to where we can function. Nobody taking over in August is going to make any single change to your life as a Kenyan unless the issues of dignity, the Utu, the, the values are discussed. That you can take to the bank. Nobody will give you less prices. Nobody will give you a more peaceful country. Nobody will give you a more united country unless we go back to who we are as a people. And we, we can go into that. So I'm in this for the long haul. And by the way, that, this whole issue of dignifying Kenyans and dignifying, in fact, everyone who is in Kenya, including foreigners, uh, the, the issue of values is not something I'm coming into today. Uh, as early as 2018, I was already addressing this, mm. 2019. By the time we're getting to the BBI debate, and I'm saying we don't need the BBI, but a VBI, a Value Building Initiative. Mm. Um, that was 2019, 2020 into 2021. So I, I was hitting the, the campaign trail with something that I'm very passionate about. Utuwetu, Maadili. Mm. Now, so that's why I'm running. Now, do you think you have sufficient time to mount a campaign that will hold on, hold on, speak hold on, people? hold on to the second thing? Because I'm still looking at the 20 days. Okay. Yeah, you're, you're fixated on the 20 days. Yes, but uh, nobody will fix this country in 20 days. Not even those who are running. It's the only so, time we have to vote. So, so, so <laughs> this this case is massive, Eric. It's massive because that decision yesterday brought victory to a lot of situations. Independent candidates that were locked out, persons living with disability, not just in Kenya, mm. but across Africa, and certainly those who believe in these ideals that were fed up with the options we have. So, 20 days, are they enough? I would say more than enough. One, because Kenyans are not hearing of me for the first time, but secondly, a day in politics is a long, long, long time. One day in politics. And you give me 14, you give me 20 days. Mm. I could do a lot with 20 days. And we are going to ensure that although we will not be able to come every village, every um, ward, we are going to put out our message with the help of our partners on the ground in such a way that... When I appear in the region, it will reverberate to the world level and so on. So we have strategically set out uh, campaigns according to regions. Um, but I need to remind you about um, how late Trump came into America's politics. That was really towards the tail end. I need to remind you about Matiba in 1992 when he flew in and made such ripples. It is really about people believing in you or people believing in a cause and what you stand for. I can't tell you enough of how many Kenyans had told me, okay, so if you're locked out, then I'm not going to vote. My own mother said, no need. Mm. My own children said, but that's close to me. I read online and, you know, friends writing and saying, um, I will, even if your name is not on, on the ballot, I'll write it. Mm. You know, I'd, I'd rather have a spoiled vote, you know? Yeah. And, and then there are many things that I could tell you in that line. But uh, we are ready to represent those who are dissatisfied with the options that there are. Mm. We are ready to represent those who want a different way of doing politics, a different way of, um, uh, you know, uh, expressing what 
the Kenyan really wants. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the politics right now, you know that um, with the exhaustion that's creeping in on uh, my colleagues and so on, um, there's a lot of anger, there is a lot of uh, uh, wild exchanges, so that the we are already losing on that issue of values and, and how we even address each other. There's so much fighting, um, you know, on the campaign trail. I'm hoping that I can drive this to the end without insulting anybody, but just staying on cause with the issues without, you know, going out and uh, uh, maligning or mudslinging my, my, my opponents. I've done it from April 2021. I think 20 days are not too many to prove that uh, you can have a clean campaign. This is the thing. And how does it translate, Ruben? Mm -hmm. Into what does it translate now that we are looking at? So providing this alternative and looking at the last one month where it's been a back and forth, because I'm speaking specifically about your campaign today, where it's been a back and forth, IEBC, this other DRC, you know, it's and then, unfortunate. And then I, I to wish... say that that has been a time gobbler, let, if we're going to be honest. You. So how does it translate? For these people that we say that, the ones who are looking for the alternative, how does it translate into something tangible? Do it, it is so easy for me to sit back and just say, you know, uh, they've done this to me, IBC this, IBC that, and, and say, ah, no point running. Mm. It's very easy for me to do that. But I don't run for myself. Mm. I run for a lot of people that believe in a better Kenya. So put it this way. C.S. Lewis said, mm. it's, it's better to love and lose than not to love at all. Mm. What do I tell a lot of the young people that have been looking up to me if I don't push this to the end? What do I tell all these persons living with disability that have, you know, dreamt of this opportunity it's come and then i just sort of retreat and say you know 20 days you know well, yeah mm. no and like i said you don't look at an election as a single event so you're looking at a process i believe in 20 days we can bring our discourse to an honorable conclusion and have sufficient uh, in number of votes to be able to either tilt something for mes for a message's sake again, mm. or indeed force a rerun. And let's get to the table and talk. And at that point, you talk about where the country is going, not whether you like somebody or not. Ruben, let me ask you this question. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that the polls that we keep having in this country are representative of the reality of well, as it represents the popularity of the candidates, political candidates in the country. Yes and no. Hmm. Um, yes, because that's what we've got. Hmm. So that is what it actually represents. And uh, if you go out, uh, you know, on any campaign trail, people are not even so much looking at the parties anymore. They're looking hmm. at the candidate. And so what does the candidate stand for? And it is how you then communicate, how you package yourself. So you will, when you listen to Azmio, for example, they're basically saying one, two, three. You listen to UDA, they're saying one, two, three. Now comes Wajakoya, you know, Wajakoya will be associated with a particular message. Mm. So will Maore. And now comes Kigame. Is this just another pile up on the ballot? No, I have a totally different messaging. I represent a totally different way of looking at fixing Kenya. Now, uh, the fact that it's, it, it, you know, it does not represent the ideal does not mean that it shouldn't. So we need to work on this and it is a process again. I believe this is the first time the issue of dignity and values and people-centered development is coming to, pol to the political space in Kenya's history. And I believe that uh, whatever my candidature represents mm. is significant in tilting the way we advance Kenya's politics for the future.
Okay. So, for example, uh, God forbid, I fall dead in three days. Nobody would ever say that um, the last two years have not had an interruption in terms of how we do our politics. And that's what we want. Uh, Eric, if you looked at that judgment, mm. the judge actually says it's time for parliament to actually look at certain things. It's time for this issue. In fact, he directed uh, the registrar to, to ensure that the ruling is taken to parliament mm. because there are critical issues to discuss. Now, if that is all I would achieve mm. to mainstream certain dialogues, so be it. Because victory in any election is not just uh, demographic. Victory is also ideological. Would it include then being part of a government, for example, to then lend your, your, you know, your thoughts and your ideologies then to that, to continue to change thought in that aspect? Do whether I'm in parliament, whether I'm in uh, the executive or not, come August 9, nobody will ignore what I have talked about with regard to the dignity and, uh, you know, the, the, the issue of values. You know, that, the reason why, uh -huh. Ruben, the reason why I brought in the issue of the polls mm -hmm. is because you correctly put it that the candidates, the candidates for the presidential seat have messages that people remember. Some of them, one doesn't really remember because they all sound the same. But Do they? One, yes, they sound the same. Uh, just a different way of saying the same thing over and over again. The, the one voice that has been completely different, and I'm using the word different, I'm not, has been that one of Wajakoyas in the way that it has been received, and the polls have resonated with it. What your messaging is, is also unique and different. But the polls do not see any reson resonance of what you are saying. Now, the question I'm asking is, valuable as what you stand for is, in the time that we have left, how else are you going to present it so that it actually resonates and is recognized by the pollsters that this messaging of Kigame's team is something that the country actually sees as should we say, powerful. In fact, uh, so a media space like this is, is something I really appreciate because then people get to hear. Mm -hmm. Now, it is very clear that each of these candidates stands for something. And uh, so it's like when you see a doctor, what do you see? You know, if you, if you see a stethoscope, you win doctor. If you see... Uh, Kigame, maybe somebody sees a song, mm. you know. So everybody carries something. When you see or listen to the messaging of, uh, let's say, Wajakoya, he represents a particular message, but actually the reason why he is very successful in messaging is because he is disruptive, mm -hmm. because he's saying something that uh, the other candidates are not saying. And he's also giving certain solutions no presenting certain might be solutions yes they, they are not solutions well they are mm. well until they are tested they, they are, they not are solutions. still solutions that's your opinion yes. according to him they are solutions mm. so you give him that space but then comes a group of people that says i do not agree with what he is saying now what if on the ballot they had no candidate that represented what they want to hear so that's why IBC, in including me, then gives certain Kenyans a chance to vote for maybe something different from Raila, something different from uh, the Hasla uh, messaging, something different from Wajakoya and Maori. So my messaging is simply this, that economy is not really our number one stopping place. We, we shouldn't even focus on the economy before we fix the people in government that are going to be handling economy. So appointments for me are critical. Mm. And those appointments do solve a particular problem. Uh, you see, the fish rots from the, the head. Eh? Mm. So all you say about a good fish, if the head is, is rotted, there is a problem. So somebody may think we should start at the bottom. I really think we should start at the top. 
because that's where the problem is. And so we, um, my coming into the space is disruptive. And it's a pity if especially IEBC would um, spend so much energy clearing candidates that everybody has doubts about. Mm. All these, uh, you know, degrees and so on. Up to the, the point where we're asking, what's the criterion really? Um, it would be a pity for them to even say, we've already printed the, um, the ballot papers, so we can't accommodate you. Mm. That would actually be detrimental. It would be a problem at three levels. One, it would indicate that they had already decided to leave me out because the CJ said that those cases were being you know, taken care of until last weekend. Mm. And guess what? I was in court with them. Mm. Mm. So if they printed and they are with, in court with me, it means they had decided they don't want this guy on the ballot. But secondly, you know, they were working on their best case scenario. <laughs> <laughs> and not my best case scenario. So, and, and not the citizens' best case scenario. Mm. But uh, it, it would even be worse because in 2017, Justice Maraga ruled that the process of every election is just as important as the actual voting. And so if we already are dissatisfied, not just with this particular issue, but with, you know, the digitization, whether it's manual or, you know, if all these cases are on, they, then they would be giving us fodder for the possibility of an nullification. Mm -hmm. And we're saying we don't have to go that way. It is cheaper to include Ruben on the ballot than to run an election again. Mm. Mm. Don't you think? It is. If it's just economics. It is. It's cheaper now than uh, you taking them again to court and they're told this election was irregular because you locked out a candidate. That's true. So, what next? Now you are in Nairobi. IBC headquarters are in Nairobi. Uh -huh. yeah. What are you doing now from this point on? Of course, Nanda Kwaona. I'm being the easy signature. I'm chukui. The easy degree. Moja, Bill. I'm chukui. I'm chukui. Ziko sawa, haziko sawa. Koti mesema. Mwangali easy bit. Munaniweka kwa balot hamuniweki. What would your desire be? Because that would be the question is that through all of this, was it to get. Uh, the realization that the IEBC was operating in an unorthodox manner? Do. Or was it to get on the ballot? After yesterday's ruling, mm. it doesn't matter. So what is it then? It's, it's one of two things. If I'm on the ballot, mm. we give Kenyans a chance, a real good chance to have an authentic alternative. Okay. Something different. Okay. If I'm not, it doesn't mean I'm going to stay quiet. In fact, it would be worse. <laughs> Because you can be sure I will disrupt the election. Because I'll be asking why. I'll be asking the questions while you need to be voting. Mm. And I'll be talking about the need for a nullification. Mm. So it's easier. In fact, there are things I would like to do that I can't say on radio. They're not criminal. Mm. Why not? But we would put out such a fuss until people know that they cannot push citizens to go a particular way. And I'm not the first revolutionary in the world. Okay. Sawa. There's more. To me it's worse <laughs> if I'm not on the ballot. It will actually get... You so, know, wait, yes. are you going to wait for their invitation? Or are you going to take yourself there? Or are you going to take yourself there? And if you go there and they tell you, it's okay, you wait, we'll call you. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, you're bad. <laughs> we, we, we know no. how that goes. Yeah. No, actually. <laughs> they'll, call, they'll call him next year. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, but I could also go there and they still ignore me. They are veterans at that. So uh, I'll do what uh, my team says I need to do. Okay. Uh, because I'm also answerable to a team. Mm -hmm. And then from here, expect one of two things that um, you will see me on uh, uh, the on campaign tra trail across the country okay. or you will see me in the courts and everywhere else and uh, in uh, the mobilization uh, of citizens that I'm very good at. Okay. Ruben, thank you very much for joining no, us. No, thank you for the opportunity. Mm. And we wish you all the best as you engage. Yeah, keep doing what you're doing. Asante sana. Yeah.
Yeah, it's good to have passion. And we wish you success. It's a bit more than passion. There's, there's going it's, to be... It's deeper. Some, yes, okay. some, something really major coming up. Okay.